forms. Uh, on the morning meeting today, I talked, uh, Pat asked me that exact same question. And there's really about at least three business reasons why you would use it. One would be recruiting. Why? Well, recruiting, um, you want to know a little bit more about the person that you're recruiting. And you want to also start giving them an, a, you know, assignments, things that they need to do to show that they're actually interested in the job. So a form allows you to do that. It allows you to have them answer questions that would be meaningful to you helping them in their training. Also, it would allow them to, to do things that would help them in their career and show that they're interested. Secondarily, you might want to use this for someone who would be a potential claim uh, client, someone who is a PCR client. You might want to have them share with you uh, their insurance policy number, um, whether or not they've had any claims in the past, um, what they think about their policy as to whether or not you know, doing a claim is going to increase their premium, uh, whether or not they're allowed to do a claim. Um, there's a bunch of different questions you can ask, and that will help you with them when time comes for you to do a PCR with them. Third thing is that you might use this as a, as a blanket marketing tool. You might put a survey out on Facebook or on LinkedIn that would uh, allow people to help you help them. Uh, so you might put a, 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 poly, a, a, a form out there that would, uh, that would have them answer, you know, who is your insurance provider and would allow them to see who other people's uh, providers are as well. You know, did, have they had a claim? Uh, under what circumstances would they do a claim? Um, they, you might even ask them, what does a, a all-risk policy cover? And give them a couple of different answers as to what it might cover and see whether they actually know the, the real terms for it or whether they really understand even the concept of what an all-risk policy is. You see, you could use this on a, on a number of different basis. And what this does is it gives you an equalizer so that if you don't know people that own homes directly, you might actually know people indirectly that are part of your Facebook community or part of your LinkedIn community or part of your Instagram community. And those people might be willing to help you uh, do your training by doing a policy review. No, I'm not sharing my screen yet. Yeah, no, 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 that's okay. So if you're sharing it, uh, the form, you're saying uh, you could send this form to your Facebook community? Yeah, you could send it to your Facebook community, to your LinkedIn community. And um, you could put it out on Craigslist. You could use it as um, um, a, uh, a tool as part of your hiring process with, with uh, ZipRecruiter. There's a number of different ways of using the uh, form. Uh, it's, it's a great tool um, for, for you to use to gather information. And that information can be specific to either getting a claim, hiring somebody, or just broadening your network. Maybe you want to find out who, um, who is the popular plumber in an area. Who is the popular uh, property inspector? Is there somebody that you rely on for your electrical work? How about for your carpentry? How about for HVAC? You see, by asking these questions, now you can start gathering information as to who you should use, perhaps in your professional network. Who should you reach out to to tell uh, to talk about your public adjusting business? So that you might be able to partner with them. So, so in other words, like if you were if you uh, submitted that kind of a form to your Facebook community, you might preface it by saying, "Hey, can you help help me out by taking this survey?" Um, blah blah blah. 
That yeah. For example, uh, Kayla, are you on, on the call tonight or no? Yeah, I'm right here. All right. So Kayla just moved to uh, North Carolina. And uh, earlier today, she said, but Paul, I really don't know a lot of people in North Carolina. So how could she get to know her community a little bit better? Well, uh, I'm sharing my screen, right? Robert, am I sharing my screen? Sure. All right. So if you go to this nine uh, little dots here in the corner on your um, on your Google or on your Chrome, you'll get to the uh, all the different Google applications that are available. And if you go down to the bottom, there's this thing called forms. So let's hit forms. And here you now create forms, which are really surveys. All right, so I'm gonna create a new one. So you saw that all I did was I hit new form, right? Everybody saw that? Yeah. Okay. So now I can I can rename this form so I can say um getting to know you. And the form description, uh getting to know the resources in my area. Mm, that's good. All right. So now I have, and now I'm going to ask for the email address of the person that I'm talking to. And now if I hit the plus question, so the plus sign allows me to add new questions to this questionnaire, to this survey. This allows me to import questions from another survey into this survey. I can add titles and descriptions. I can add images. I can put a picture in here. I can add a video. I can put a new video in here and I can put a new section in here. I will do some of these other things in the next, uh, in the next part. I'm going to do a really basic questionnaire or survey at this point. So all I want to do right now is I want to add another question. So I've already got a question asking for an email address. I'm going to ask here, what is your name? And I'm gonna ask for a short answer. In other words, all I want is that person to answer their name. I could ask for a paragraph <laughs> on your name. I don't think so. <laughs> you could do multiple choice. Okay, so do you want A, B, or C? You could do check boxes. So maybe you've got a question where it's gonna be multiple choice, where there's multiple answers that could be correct. You could do this and have them answer multiple, uh, have multiple answers in that one. And then you could also do a drop down, or you could actually have them upload a file. So there's a bunch of different things you can do as far as the types of questions that you ask. Here, all I'm looking for is a short answer for your name. Let's do another question. Let's ask, what is your telephone number. Again, I can ask a short, short answer. Now, what I might want to do is I want to, I, I want to have this required and I want to have this one required. What that means is they have to answer these questions in order to move through. They have to answer them. So they're going to have to answer the name. Now, do they put their real name in? I hope so. <laughs> But they don't have to. I don't have any way of checking it, right? Same thing with telephone number. I'm going to require it, but do I know that they're going to give me the right number? I don't know. Um, but I can validate it. I can say, yeah, it's going to be a number, and it's going to be a whole number, okay? So I can make sure that I know that it's a real number. Um, do I want that or do I want, yeah, I guess a whole number is the right answer on that one. So now at least I know I'm going to get a real number in there. All right. So now maybe I ask another question. So again, I'm trying to get to know you. So let's ask here, um, if you have a problem with plumbing, who who do you call? 
We'll do a short answer there. If you want to go out, uh, go out to dinner, where would you go? Right? So you're, you're asking a bunch of things so that you can kind of get to know your neighborhood a little bit. What other questions? You got a question for me? What else, what, what else would you ask? Realtor. Ah, okay. Do you know a preferred realtor? Great question. How about a multiple choice? Anything that you... Okay, good. Paul, don't forget, if, if you say, do you know a preferred realtor... You may want to have a yes or no there unless you're getting right, unless you're asking them for a name. Good choice. Good. Uh, good point. So maybe I do multiple choice there. Option one is going to be yes. Option two would be no. Do I want to have another? Maybe. <laughs> the, name of, the name of the realtor? If yes. So that goes into, um, so you can actually um, have questions go to other areas of the questionnaire based upon what their answer is. I don't want to do that right now, but just do you have a preferred realtor? Um, yes. Um, let's say um, who... Would you recommend for realty transactions? And I'll do that as a short answer. What about roofers? Like, who would you recommend for Excellent. roofing? Who? And again, this would be a short answer. Mm. Do you want to add to that at this point? Like, can you describe um, any experiences that you had, you know, where you had to call, you know? How about have you ever had a claim? And now I could do multiple choice. I could say yes in the past year. Well, you want to I say, could say yes. You want um, to say property uh, damage claim, right? Property insurance, or because if you say claim, if, if they might say, "Well, yeah, I had a, an auto claim," you know. Okay. Yes. Uh, over a year ago, I could say no. I could say probably should have filed a claim. Okay. So now I've got a multiple choice here where they could pick one of these answers. Now, this is a decent, this is a decent survey. This all, it, all it's doing is kind of getting to know you. So this is something that you could use if you're moving, if you've moved into a new area, Melissa, you're basically in a new area, right? Um, uh, Kayla, you're in a new area. There's, you know, when you move into a new area, why not ask other people around you, who would you use? Right. You know, so that you've got some names of people in case you need a new carpenter, or maybe, um, maybe you need a, a plumber, or, or maybe you need, um, you know, a, a, uh, a good restaurant to go to or a flower shop, you know, whatever it is, you can ask these questions and then you can get into some other things like, have you ever had a property claim? I mean, do you, who's your insurer? You know, maybe I, I do a, um, up here, I do a, a question before I ask about a claim as to who is your insurance company? Who is your 
um, uh, do you have, let's, because we don't know if they own a home or not. So do you have a property insurance agent? Would help if I could spell. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then based upon that, I might ask another question of who is your insurance agent? And then I could ask about a property claim. So I could ask about flower shops. I could, uh, you know, ask about, you know, where do you get your fruit? You know, whatever it is, I, you know, you, your creativity is going to lead you for your survey. Okay. This is just something randomly that I've put together. But now I've got a survey here that I can I can use. So now that I've got it, I can um, I can customize it. I can change the colors on it. Maybe I want it orange, or maybe I want it green, right? Maybe I want the background color to be white, but I want it to be kind of greenish. I can do that. I can change it around. I can put a header on there. I can get an, uh, a different image up there. I can choose this image you see and now i've got that or i could upload something so for example i have um uh, let's see here choose an image upload so i have in my metro pa marketing i have the banner so i can put the banner up there so where's my banner do you really want to put metro's name out though no. right pat all i'm showing is is that look at the variety of things right. that you can do okay okay, okay. you know i'm just saying that that i I've been able to customize this form so that now it's got, you know, it's a Metro specific form. It, it could mean you could just put something else up there, but I'm just saying that you can upload a picture uh, of you and your family. Uh, you could upload a, a picture of your neighborhood, whatever you want to do. Okay. Got a quick question though. Sure. Like the question she was about to ask. Are we allowed to or not allowed to, if we, you know, to add Metro's information, like that banner and stuff? No, you can absolutely add this banner. Okay. All right. So now I've got questions set. I've kind of customized it. So now let's say I want to be able to make this available to other people. So I hit this button called send. And it's going to um, it's going to now enable me to email it to somebody specifically, or I can click on this and it gives me a link. I can shorten that link to this. I can copy it. You cut and paste it. I copy it. And now if I wanted to, I could go out to Facebook And there's my, there's my form. So Paul done. Yes. Here's my little tip. Uh, I put this, I put my survey link in the chat. If you go to tiny URL, you can actually customize your link. Right. So my, mine says tinyurl.com, And I'm now I made it helping homeowners. Yep. So you can actually go beyond uh, just using this. Um, where is it? So using this, um, this shortened URL, you can actually go to a, a, a site called uh, tiny URL and it, you can actually customize it and actually give it a, a specific name that you want to give it. But this at least gives you a small link that you can then use in LinkedIn, in uh, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want. You could put this form in your TikTok profile so that whenever somebody clicks on your name and on your profile, they're going to go to this form. 
Now, obviously, you're going to want to have other kinds of questions on it than this. But what a great way of getting more information and capturing information about those people that are interested in whatever it is you've posted. I guess, um, like, if, if you you know, didn't get a chance to go to tiny URL. I don't even know how that works, but you could always just preface the, you know, put a little note before the link and say, Hey, I'm looking to get to know people, you know, and explain what the link in general has. Exactly. Sure. Absolutely. Now, once, once you've had this out there, you then go to responses and it will give you all of the responses that you want or you can click this and it will create a new spreadsheet. Now you can actually name this spreadsheet. So I'm gonna name it getting to know you. And now I have all of those questions that I asked listed here in columns and everybody that answers this, uh, this questionnaire will be listed here when they answered it their email address, their name, and all of the information that I requested. Wow. It automatically does that when you click. Uh, yes. Wow. Wow. You know, what's interesting, I, I noticed too, that you, you never really have to hit save. On these. No, it automatically saves everything for you. Wow. Wow. All right. Does anybody have any questions about that? Because, you know, that's... This is so simple to use, guys. The other cool thing about that is, you know, obviously it stores all the data for you. And you can look at all the data compiled together. It actually will show you like pie charts and stuff like that. But you can also look at individual responses. Yeah. So, so I can like here's one I've got for um, this is for all of my new trainees. When they when they come on board, they're supposed to fill out this questionnaire. I'll be honest with you, most, most people don't, <laughs> but I do have 434 responses. Wow. So I can look at that in this express or uh, in this uh, timesheet and hear all of their responses. Huh? Wait, you said most of them don't fill it out. Well, yeah. Cause I don't, I, I don't force them to. So, you know, some people won't. 432 responses. That's pretty good. But, Take a look at this. First off, I want you to note, I have six different sections on this, uh, on this form. What I want you to do is I want you to realize that you can ask questions and then direct people to various parts of the form based upon their answer. Oh, wow. So, for example, I have, um, let's see here. Um, So here I have um, who, who owns a home, and this is a multiple choice. So people can answer many of these things, right? So that I can identify who am I going to talk to or who do I want my, my new recruit to talk to as far as a potential claim? Who do they know as far as particular uh, potential partners? Do they know a realtor? Do they know a home inspector? Do they know a chimney sweep or a, a fireplace? Um, do they know anybody in the solar energy industry? How about do they belong to a union or a church? You see, all of these places are, are potential uh, areas where they can get new clients. Wow, that's really good. After they do section two, they continue to the new section. When can they work? How many hours can they work when they can work? How many hours are they going to be able to work at a particular time? After, after section three, they continue to the next section. So I can actually change it so that they can. Um, I'm trying to find an area here where I have a question that. So Paul, so you so if somebody says, yes, I own a house then that would link that would that would send them to another form to another link and to another section so track them into 
Okay, cool. So let's say, for example, uh, mm-hmm. in this section, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're going to say, yes, I own, I own a home. Mm-hmm. I can go over here and I can, um, oh, not because of that answer. Uh, here we go. Um, this one would do allow me to do it. So you see, I can go to a section based on the answer. So if they say, yes, I've already registered it, for Paul. Quick Start. I love it. Thank you. I can go to another section. So all you have to do is just develop a section for somebody who's got a home. If they don't own a home, you send them to a different section, right? Where they're going to, now you're going to say, all right, you don't own a home, but maybe your parents own a home. Do you have a partner that owns a home? Do you have friends that own a home? Right? So now you can ask those questions. So uh, technically speaking, um, if you click on for this particular question, if you click on, you know, go to section based on answer, um, say they say yes to I own a home. Do you then, uh, maybe you're setting it up now, I don't know, but uh, you, you put a, a link or something? Yeah, so let's, let's do one, okay? So let's, yeah, yeah. let's set up a form. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do the same untitled form only here. I'm going to say, um, first question, what's your name? Short answer. Um, what state do you live in? That's a good one. <laughs> All right. And now I'm going to have, uh, uh, let's do multiple choice. All right. So option one, New Jersey, option two, Pennsylvania. Maryland, uh, West Virginia. And then I'm going to say other. Okay. Do you own your home? Yes. No. Now I'm going to create a new section. And I'm going to call this one owned home. Now I'm going to ask a question. Who do you have insurance with? Now I can, I can, um, I can have this be state farm farmers, all state (laughs) other Right. I can do that. Or I could just have it as a short answer and have them just put a number out there. OK, put a name out there. I uh, just wrote then quick. I can just hold on for a second. OK, sure, sure, sure. now I can ask another question. I could say, have you had a claim? Yes. In the past year. Yes, in the past five years. No, probably should have. (laughs) All right. Now, this is all section two. So now let's do another section called rental. I just... uh, Now what I've got, now hold on for a second. So you see on this, do you own a home? I had yes and no. So now with yes, I'm going to say go to section based on answer. And I'm going to go, go to section two. With no, I'm going to say go to section three. Does everybody see that? Does everybody understand what I just did? So then if they click yes, they will automatically be brought to that section. Yes. Wow. Um, and all I was going to ask is, I just didn't see the icon that you were clicking on to create a section. It's the last icon there with the two Yeah, it's this panel. one with the two bars. Got it. Got it. That's, that's great. That's awesome. Amazing. Does anybody have any question about this? Wow. Is this pretty cool? This is. And what, Definitely. what I want to see is, is how you would do it for, like, say, ZipRecruiter. 
you know, for recruits. Well, what would you want to do? Um, <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you know, said you, were, you said you were using it for. Zip yeah, recruits. but I'm, all I'm telling you, Pat, is, is that you, it's your creativity. That's all that's, that's, all, you know, your the, the, uh, the limit is basically your creativity. You can do with this whatever you want because you can move people to section to section based upon their answers. So let's say, for example, they say uh, instead of other, let's stay, let's say, for example, um, out of the USA. All right. Now I create another section called. Goodbye. Have a nice life. Right? So now I can say on this one, I can say go to section based on answer. And on this one, I want them to go to uh, goodbye. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you, do you use um do you use this now like in your oh yeah forms? Really? yeah Wow. Because of course, in ZipRecruiter, you can always put like qualifying, you know, like answers you could say. Yeah, but now, now understand, look at this. It has go to your own home after this. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is on, on this one, I'm going to say, um, I want to, I want this one to be a different move section and I'm going to move it down to the end. So now it's four of four. Whoa. Yeah. So now it's all the way down at the end. And now I can say, um, do you own your own home? I want that one to be up here. Um, owned home. So that's where I want it. So goodbye. And at the end of this, um, I can I can basically put a, a a question in that basically says uh, end of um, end of uh, survey end of the road yeah <laughs> so actually I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this one I'm gonna delete it and just say goodbye so when you finally do your PCRs and I would love to know when you do your PCRs because um, I've only really heard John so far. <laughs> So when you do your PCRs, you've got all these people that have maybe filled out, you know, the survey first. Yeah, but the thing is, Pat, is that you want to use this when you're doing your training. So like, for example, when I'm dealing with Melissa or Kayla or somebody like that, I want to know from them whether or not they have people that they know that are realtors. You know, so, you know, that's why I use this form. Um onboarding. So look at the questions. So this is what I send out to a new person on the team. I want to know their name, their email address, telephone number. When are they willing to commit to training? That's good, isn't it? You want people to realize that training is important. Have they registered for quick start? If yes, that's good. If they haven't, here's the link. <laughs> Register. <laughs> Have you sent an email to our licensing department? In other words, do they know what the licensing requirements are for their state? If they don't, here it is, send it out. So now I want to know a little bit about them. So what's important to them? What's their number one priority in life? Because earning a living may not be their number one priority. It might be family responsibilities. You know, when I got started with this business, I was a single parent. Family responsibilities was, was my number one priority. That was number one. Earning a living, number two, right? So I want to know what that is with somebody that I'm hiring because it's going to tell me how I'm going to train this person. It's going to tell me what my priority is with this person. You know, am I their number one priority or am I number three? right? Because that's going to make a difference as to how we train. What's their number two priority? I'm hoping that if I'm not number one, that I am number two. 
If I'm not number two, then I may not, they may not really have a place on this team, right? Because I'm too far, I'm too far down. So, also, look at this. I've got hobby or gaming as my number three. <laughs> you know, I, uh, that'll that'll tell me a lot, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So next, field training. Okay. So now I'm looking at how am I going to get this person a policy review? How am I going to get money into this person's pocket? Because as a trainer, one of my first things that I want is I want my trainee to earn some money right away. So how are they going to do it? Well, maybe they own a home or maybe their life partner or their, their, their spouse owns a home. Great. Maybe their parents do. How about a, how about a sibling? Right. So I'm going to go through these, these questions. Then I, I want to know, all right, so maybe these people don't own a home, but maybe they know somebody that's in the business. So who do they know? That's a realtor. Who do they know? That's a plumber. Who do they know that might be in remediation or a roofer, right? Then, okay, so now maybe they don't own a home. They don't know anybody that's in the business. Well, where do they meet people? Where are their friends? Do they belong to a union? How about a church? How about a, a, a civic group? How about a hobby? You know, where where do they fit so these these questions here are going to direct me as to how am i going to move forward with them regarding a policy coverage review does that make sense to everybody well um th this is uh, what you were just talking about this this uh, survey here is for trainees right yes but what i was talking about before was like if you're putting a form a survey in ZipRecruiter. Okay? Pat, I'm not going to put the survey together for you. You got to do it yourself. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Let me finish. Let me finish. Um, so, yeah. Well, the thing is, um, so if you do that, okay, um, then these people, I guess that now you're also encouraging them to attend a PIP, right? Yeah. So, like for example, here's the questions for a client advocate. How much do you want to make per month? Okay. How much time are you willing to spend in your part-time work? How long are you willing to work in order to meet those, you know, those, you know, if you want to make a thousand dollars a month, how long are you willing to work to get to that point? So basically, you want to learn uh, more. In Moving my, forward, in are my you willing opinion, to... but but Paul, in, uh, in my opinion, because Pat's been in the business for a long time, uh, this is what we had in the one-on-one -on -one form. Yeah, but Paul's ma made it multi-dimensional with mm -hmm. a lot of thought, and uh, it's great. I mean, this is because we used to we used to chit chat about mm -hmm. this, and then it went off into this in space. This way, you're capturing it and. Really, what a great training today. I'm enjoying this. Great. And, and what's really great here is now you've got a name and an email address that you can reach out to six months from now. And you can send to them, hey, listen, I know you were looking for work six <laughs> months ago. I, I, I want to find out, did you find something? If not, hey, listen, I'm still hiring. Are you interested? So now you're gaining a a group of names that you can now touch on a regular basis and hopefully develop into new, new, um, new, new partners or maybe into clients. But so, this is a little, this is a little, um, you know, kind of format that you might use on ZipRecruiter to kind of see whether or not somebody's interested in moving forward and whether or not they've got the mindset to work for themselves. Does so that make you, sense, Pat? Um, sort of, yeah. So do you put this form, um, do you put the survey plus a link uh, to sign up for your PIP on in the ZipRecruiter ad? Yeah, or you could put this into your Calendly and say, hey, listen, um, you just signed up to do a, an open interview or to a PIP. I'd like you to fill this out in advance of the PIP. 
I see. So it's there for them to fill out. I mean, yeah, and you could put it. But- you could put it in the ZipRecruiter ad. You could follow it up in the Calendly link. So that there's now there's two opportunities for that person to see it, and then in your follow up to the uh, interview, you could say, "Hey, listen, thank you for participating. If you haven't done it yet, please fill out this survey." That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. So yeah. now you've got three different opportunities where you've given that person an opportunity to to fill out this survey for you. That's right. Do we need to have Calendly or can we use Google Calendar? You can use Google Calendar. Calendly is a way for them to automatically sign up for a um, uh, for a time slot. So Calendly is simply a, a free tool that's available to you to work with. Do it's you need way- Calendly to work with Rapid Funnel as well? So Calendly, doing that? Calendly doesn't work directly with Rapid Funnel, but what you can do is you can send an invite through Rapid Funnel uh, with Calendly as the link. I can train on that with you later or at another time. Okay. But you can set up a Rapid Funnel link with Calendly and then have them sign up uh, so that you get Rapid Funnel credit. And they sign up through Calendly and you have their name and all their information. Okay. When, Thanks. When do you do your pips, um, Paul? Because I would love to drop in and. I'm so do I do my pips on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, so I did one at 12 o'clock noon today. We'll do one uh, tomorrow at 9 p.m. We do another one at 9 a.m. on Wednesday and we do another one at uh, 9 p.m. on Wednesday. And and those are pretty set, uh, pretty much. Uh... Those are, uh, Robert and I do those on a regular basis. I do the um, the Monday and the uh, Tuesday, uh, Robert, and, and I do Wednesday morning, and then Robert does, does Wednesday evening. Nice. Okay, so if we wanted to get the... Um... If well, we you already to- you already know the Zoom room, <laughs> so all you have to do is just uh, sign on and you'll get in. Yeah, I was wondering uh, if I wanted to have uh, a, a zip recruiter, you know. Uh, so these are for our team. I, I am not opening this up for everybody. Uh, our, our pips are for our team. I'm more than happy to have you guys listen in. Okay. But not to have your recruits come in. Our uh, the recruits that come into these pips are Roberts, Lesses, Mike Protos, um, Renee Murray's. They're part of anybody that's on my team can participate in. What's that, Robert? Right. Okay. okay. But you guys, you guys can sit in and see them and I'd be more than happy to make my slides available to you if you like my slides better than the corporate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are better. Mine are, I, I have a lot less redundancy and I don't yeah. go through as much information. Uh, my, uh, my slides, you can go through in about 15 minutes. The corporate slides take at least 30 minutes to go through. Okay. Thank you, thank you. So let me ask you, do you feel a little bit more comfortable about Google Forms? Yeah, awesome. I do. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You understand how to set up. So when you're going about setting up a, a, a survey, okay, and let's just call them surveys at this point. When you're going to set up a survey, you've got to think through in your mind a little bit about the logic of how you want it to go. In other words, If they say, I own a home, well, what kind of questions do I want to ask at that point? If they say, I don't own a home, what kind of questions do I want to ask at that point? If they say, I have family members that own a home, what kind of questions do you want to ask at that point? If they say, I don't know anybody that owns a home, what do you want to do? What, what kind of questions do you want to ask at that point? So you want to think this through a little bit before you actually set it up. Does that make sense? Yep. 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 Because you're going to want to set up different sections. 
based upon what you want them to do. Because a question for someone who owns a home is going to seem really stupid for somebody who doesn't own a home, right? Yes. Somebody who wants additional income, you know, really, who cares who their insurance provider is, <laughs> right? So, yeah. like, if you're asking, if you've got a questionnaire out there that you're putting out and, you know, maybe uh, it's one of those getting to know you um, surveys. And one of the question, questions might be, hey, uh, do you work full time? Okay, well, if you work full time, are you interested in additional income? If you work part time, do you have multiple part time work? Right? Because now you know somebody who's in the gig society mindset, right? They're not old like me <laughs> and think that they're going to have one job and that's going to keep them through life. <laughs> Right. You've got somebody who's who's more like, you know, um, uh, Kayla's age and, and maybe is is more familiar with the uh, with the gig society. So you're going to ask their questions a little bit differently for somebody like that than you are for somebody like me. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. So you want to set up these sections, have a little bit of a mindset of those sections before you go into it, because that's really that's that's really how you make this really productive for you. Now, understand all of the sections are going to come back into your responses. So when you go to your spreadsheet, you're going to have all of the questions all the way through, okay? So even if it wasn't uh, a section that they answered, uh, they're still going to have that column on their name. So you know, even if they didn't answer for a particular area, they're going to have that that uh, in their in their uh, response. But you have now responses that you can use to help you help them with either their training or with filing a claim or with figuring out whether or not this is a, a job that they kind of want to do. Paul, with you asking about, or I mean, you mentioning about um, them not answering something, if they choose not to answer a section, that doesn't mean they're not going to be able to complete the form, you know, but That's like completely it, up to you. So okay. you could say that if, um, if they don't have a response, they go directly to the end. Okay. You could do that. <laughs> or you could also do it if they said, um, for example, let's say that this uh, this form is only for people who have already signed an ICA. So your first question might be, when did you sign your ICA? What's the date of signature? And if they don't have a date of signature, you, you blow them out of the whole survey. <laughs> right? Because you, it, it, it doesn't matter to them. No, it doesn't matter to you. If they okay. you know what their answers are because they haven't signed an ICA yet. So, you know, they're they're not ready for training. Just the forms back. can be used in so many different ways. You can put this out in a in a group chat. You can put this out on, you know, let's say for example, you're out on Facebook. And um, I, I was talking with Kayla about this earlier today. She just moved into North Carolina. Maybe she wants to find out, you know, what are the services around her that people like? You know, maybe she needs, she's going to need a plumber at some point. It'd be really nice to have a couple of people that have been recommended, right? So why not put a survey out on Facebook in that page area? Maybe, um, like, for example, I'm a pilot. Maybe I want to find out from other pilots, how many pilots actually own their homes? Mm. Right. I'll bet you a lot of them do. And if they don't, I'll bet they've got very angry wives because they've spent money on an airplane and they don't have a home. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that's that's probably a good survey to put out. But I can do that. I can put that survey out on that group and see who responds. Find out what states are being responsive. You know, and then I can weed out the states that I'm actually licensed in 
And now I can actually reach out to those people individually and ask my questions. Are you interested in a policy review? Are you looking for part-time income? Whatever it is. But you see, these forms give you a way of broadening your circle so that you've got new people to talk to. I'm blown away by the fact that it that this uh, Google Forms keeps all this stuff on file. It's like having like an automatic uh, secretary. It's oh yeah, but, I mean, look yeah. at that. The spreadsheet blows my blows me away. <laughs> yeah. So this is the onboarding. Um, let's let me see what else do I have here. Uh, here's a, a pre-interview one I set up. I got another 223 responses on this one. So this is one that's um, prior to them actually signing an ICA. So this is a, a questionnaire I would have them go out and answer. So first, the name, email address, telephone number, what state, you know, what's their level of education? Now, honestly, do I care about this? No. No. But you know what? They do, and they think it's important. So if I don't ask it, they're going to be a little bit concerned about, well, is this really a, a good survey or not? How much, are, how much time are you willing to dedicate to the new career? Do you have any customer service experience? What a great thing to find out about a new recruit, right? Have they dealt with the public before? Do they own a car? How about a house? Have they been self-employed? Oh, how cool is that, right? And then I have them watch the, uh, the video. Oh, wow. Wow. You, you put the video link right in the uh, Google form. Yeah. So what's really cool about this, Pat, is now I'm linking them into Rapid Funnel. So now all of that information, all of their personal information will now get captured by Rapid Funnel. So that now I can, I, I will know when they looked at this video and now I can send secondary and tertiary information to them. So you put the Rapid Funnel link in uh, another section yep. with instructions. And then as soon as they click on that Rapid Funnel link, then Rapid Funnel keeps takes rapid. over. Paul, what's the, what's the link in there that you have in there for them to click on? So this is that uh, this HTTP link right here. That is a rapid funnel link. But what, which where does that one go to? I mean, I that know one goes that. to that one goes to my video, my nine minute video. Oh, okay. Right. I just was wondering which specific video that was. Yeah. So that's, that's my nine minute video. I, okay. Honestly, that nine minute video is, is really good for hiring people. It works. Okay. So, yeah. so all you of you can use it. I don't even tell people who my name is. <laughs> yeah. So right. all, I, I did it on purpose that way so that everybody could use it. So you created your own video with your own uh, link. No, um, no, you can use this link too. So you go to Rapid Funnel. Oh, oh, you're you're there already in in Rapid Funnel. Oh my gosh. So so then Metro. So wait has a second. Wait a second, Pat. Let me get in. Oh, I didn't like that. <laughs> Because I know Metro already had its own videos. No, you don't want to use their video. Okay. All so right. if you go under resources, everybody can see this, right? Yes. Okay. You go under recruiting reps, go into intro. And because you're part of John Mesco's team, you have this thing called Metro, working with Metro overview. And this is a nine minute video that I put together. Get out. And there it is. So all you do is you, you, um, so this is the resource number right here. 
this is my personal number. Oh, boy. So you would put your personal number in there and you're all set. And all the leads that come from having somebody look at this video, it's all going to come to you. Oh, so, but we do have to put our own personal number in there? Yep, yep. But is that our metro yeah. number? Nope, that's your rapid funnel number. Your so ra you, oh, oh, rapid funnel has a number, okay. Yeah, so if, you are you, if you're on rapid funnel, then you have a number. Okay, I've got to look for my rapid funnel. You just have funnel. to go to, I guess, the administrative, your contact information. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to see here now. If I do Pat or Mick Doesn't Cloud, it work if you just go to that link, open it up and cut and paste? The... So here is you. Let me see if I can see your Metro number. I, I'm pretty sure I can. Let me see here. Oh, let me see. No, I don't see your number at this point, but you, you would see your number, Pat. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So it would be under. Uh, so what you would do is if you wanted to, you could go to resources, go to any resource. But in this case, we're looking at the, um, the Metro working with Metro, you hit this video link and then up in your URL, you'll see what your number is. And it's the second number that's up there on the, on the, uh, on the URL. Wow. And then just input yours and then send it. Yep. Or copy the link rather and put yep. it. In. Just copy the link. You don't need to put this um, anything from the question mark to the end isn't wow. required. All you need are the, are, is from the last number. This is all you need to copy and paste. I'm glad you're recording this, Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. I definitely want to see your video. So take a look at the video, but you can use that in any of your, and you can copy and paste that rapid funnel link to your Facebook page. You can do it to your LinkedIn page. You can put it out on TikTok. You can put it anywhere you want. Wow. Hmm. Then basically they can just watch the video instead of you're doing like, instead of my doing a pip. Yes. The whole Plus, thing. and Pat, the other thing is, is that now you've captured the information. So if I go to my, um, so here's, so here's a, a, a notice from Rapid Funnel. Sadie Brubaker just clicked the uh, click the link that I sent them in Rapid Funnel. She just joined my team, so this is the link that she she did. Look at this! I get her email address, her telephone number. Nice. So now I can I can copy her her email address. I can go back out to Rapid Funnel and send her another resource. Mm. This is huge because like, so here's somebody who went out and, and went to the get started page. This is somebody who has not yet joined my team. All right. I can, I can highlight his num his name. I can then go out to rapid funnel. I go to contacts. I paste his name in there. I search for it. Because he was already on the get get started page, he's already input into Rapid Funnel. Here he is. So now I can send another resource to him. So I'm going to send him my video. Mm. So here's my video uh, working with Metro. So I send it. Done. Wow. So here you can actually see whether or not they actually saw the video, how much they did and stuff. Really? Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. 
So mm -hmm. you can actually see whether or not they actually clicked on the video, whether they opened the email, and then how much of the video they actually saw. Where does it say that? Oh, total video watched. Oh, I see. Zero. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. Wow. Oh, my so God. So you can use the Google Forms to get, then get somebody put into Rapid Funnel so that everything is done automated. You're not having to do anything, Les. Because, Les, I do all of this for you at this point. <laughs> I input all your new recruits. I input into Rapid Funnel because you don't do it. Oh my God. Wow. This wow. is how it's done, guys. I, I got to tell you, this is especially great for people like me. I mean, when, you know, being a woman and trying to recruit guys, it's great that we can just send them like a video of, say, you, another guy presenting it instead of me. Yeah. Trying to get them to watch a, a pip. Absolutely. Yep. Wow. And and people, I, I get people, um, most of the people I hire, and I'm the number one recruiter. Robert and I are the number one recruiters. Mm. Wow. All of them are recruited because of that nine minute video. Wow. Oh, that's oh, true. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. All right. So when I'm telling you that that is a good video, I'm not just trying to say it because I made it. Okay. It, it works. Oh my God. It actually works guys. Wow. Wow. So what do you think about Google forms? Is it something to use? Well, not only that, but everything else you were talking about. Wow. <laughs> and when you write the Google forms, they just end up in your Google account. Yeah, just so they'll end up there and you always have it there. You always mm -hmm. had it there. It's so all of my Got recent it. forms. Look at this. This was done last in September 29th of 2021. But it's still right here. And if I click on it, all of the responses, I've got 149 responses that are still there from it. Wow. It sure beats having uh, hundreds of ICAs from uh, meetings and job fairs, and you're trying to page yes. through them with little notations to return the call, this and that. Oh, it was so frustrating, and this is really great. Oh, Dot, this, <laughs> this changes things. All, uh, wow. It turns things completely around on its head. <laughs> 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 okay. So, so here's the thing. Martin there. So here's what I'd like you to do. There's, there's, um, we've lost some people. We had as many as 20, 21 people. We're down to 14. Here's what I'd like you guys to do. I'd like you guys to put a form together and then send it to me and let me take a look at it. All right. Yes. I'll give you some feedback on it. 